Can those on teams hear us here? Yes, okay, appreciate it, thank you. We're just waiting on a quorum, then we'll get started. Good afternoon, and welcome to the June 15th meeting of the City Plan Commission. I'm Alfredo Borrego, Chair of the Commission, and I call this meeting to order at 1.34 p.m. I'm gonna take a point of privilege real quick, and I just wanna thank uh, my fellow commissioners for voting for me to be chair. I know that I have huge uh, shoes to fill that I probably won't, but I promise that I'll do my best. Also to staff, I promise to do my best as chair of this commission. Thank you. Okay, first of all, we're gonna have a call to the public. Is there any public comment? Do we have anybody on the um, phone? Um, Mr. Chair, oh, we need to have the statement read. It didn't say here. Um, Mr. Apodaca. Yes. The City Plan Commission has sole and final approval authority over subdivision maps, which is statutorily limited to a ministerial examination 
of the application's conformance to all applicable code provisions. The staff report for an agenda item may include conditions, exceptions, or modifications. The commission may approve the item with all staff report conditions, exceptions, or modifications, including additional measures regarding the item as imposed by the commission. Otherwise, the staff report with all modifications, exceptions, and conditions is approved and the applicant shall comply with all provisions of the staff report. Commissioners will consider all agenda items other than subdivision items in the form of a public hearing. The normal process is as follows. First, the commissioner will hear a staff report followed by a statement from the applicant. Then members of the public may speak followed by any final statement from the applicant. Finally, the matter will be closed for further discussion or a motion among the commission. The commission shall then make a, re a recommendation that will be forwarded to city council. Thank you, Commissioner Apodaca. Well, now we'll move to the call to the public. Uh, Any? No, uh, <laughs> it's, it's before call. that, Mr. Chair, um, Raul will give you changes to the agenda. Thank you. Mr. Garcia, Garcia Mr. any Chairman. changes to the agenda? Mr. Borrego, thank you very much. Raul Garcia, planning inspections. There are a couple changes, um, and all these are, are two-week postponements. So it's going to be item number three, item number six, item seven, and item ten. Uh, six and ten are related, so that's why those two are together. So again, it's three, six, seven, and ten. All of those are postponed for two weeks. Uh, the reason being uh, further coordination with the neighborhood. Since some information has received, some comments have been received from the neighborhood, and the applicants do want to coordinate that a little bit further directly with, with the neighborhood. Um, so those are the changes to the agenda. Other than that, uh, there is that one item on consent, which is the, the minutes, and there are several revised staff reports. That is all, sir. Thank you. Now, can we move to the public comment? Okay. One more thing, Mr. Chair. Um, Kevin Smith with Planning Inspections. If we can just get a motion to approve those changes to the agenda. Okay. Which I'm sorry, they? and if I may, I, I did forget one. Um, items five, five and nine are related, so those will be presented together and heard together. That's five and nine. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I move to accept um, the changes. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Is there anybody up for public comment? <laughs> if you're on the phone, press star six. Public comment, star six. Anybody in the audience? Mr. Chair, I believe that uh, most of the people who signed up are uh, going to be speaking on one of the items. That's oh. If not, we'll move to consent agenda. Consent agenda. Approval of the minutes. Can I entertain a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. All right, now we're moving to the regular agenda. We'll start with number two. Good afternoon, Chair and members of the Commission. This is George Olmos with Planning and Inspections. And item number two on the agenda is Vista del Norte Estates, Unit 4, and this is a major combination application. This development is located south of Stan Roberts Avenue and west of Dyer Street. Primary access to the subdivision will be provided from Dyer Street. Here we see the preliminary plat, which comprises four pages. The applicant is proposing to subdivide 111.61 acres of vacant land to create a residential subdivision that will comprise of 601 single family lots, one 4.16 acre park site, and one, point, and one 3.33 acre drainage pond. 
Primary access to the subdivision will be from Dyer Street. Drainage will be provided by surface flow runoff to the drainage pond that is located within the subdivision, uh, that is proposed within the subdivision. This application was granted vested rights and was reviewed under the standards of the subdivision code that was in effect prior to June 1st of 2008. The second page of the preliminary plat, third page, fourth page. And here we see the final plat, once again, four pages. The proposed development falls within the area of the Vista del Norte land study. The approximate location of the subdivision is highlighted in red. The land study was approved by the City Plan Commission on April 10th, 2008. In addition, the proposed development is consistent with the approved land study. Now, the applicant is requesting five modification requests per the former subdivision code. The first request is to allow for a 52-foot a residential sub-collector street consisting of 32 feet of roadway and two 10-foot parkways featuring a 5-foot landscape parkway and a 5-foot sidewalk. The second request is to allow for a 64-foot collector arterial street that will consist of 40 feet of roadway and an 11-foot parkway featuring a 4-foot landscape parkway and a 7-foot sidewalk on one side and on the other side a 13-foot parkway featuring a five-foot landscape parkway and an eight-foot sidewalk. The third request is to allow for the use of 10 and 15-foot pedestrian par uh, parkways along the, the block length. The fourth request is to allow for a location map, a location map scale of one inch to 1,000 feet instead of the one inch equaling 600 feet to provide a more legible map. And the fifth modification request is to allow the block lengths in to allow for block lengths in, ex in excess of 1,500 feet between intersections in order to allow for pedestrian and drainage pathways. Here we see the proposed 52-foot residential sub-collector street, the proposed 64-foot collector arterial street, the proposed 10-foot and 15-foot pedestrian pathways, Modification requests one through three meet criteria number three under section 19.04.170, modifications of conditions of the applicable code, which states that the subdivider has demonstrated an alternative method of development that will improve the aesthetic value of the subdivision while giving equal emphasis to factors such as safety, walkability, and sustainability. The modification requests exceed the previous design standards for construction criteria for parkways and uh, for parkway and sidewalk width by enhancing walkability and pedestrian usage. The modification request to the proposed scale of the location map provides for a higher level of context and legibility than what is otherwise required, and the modification request to allow for a block length in excess of 1,500 1, feet meets section 19.16.090B of the previous subdivision code. The proposed development does abut two large parcels at the rear that are owned by separate entities, which does make the requirements difficult to follow. The applicant will mitigate, mitigate the longer block faces by proposing drainage and pedestrian right-of-ways to increase connectivity and to promote pedestrian passage. Here we have pictures showing the existing conditions surrounding the subdivision. Staff recommends approval with conditions of Vista del Norte Estates Unit 4 on a major combination basis, subject to the following conditions. That the City Plan Commission approve the proposed Vista del Norte Estates Unit 5 prior to recordation of the current subdivision. That the City Plan Commission require the applicant to landscape the rear of all double frontage lots in accordance with section 19.16.080D of the former subdivision code. Uh, in addition, the applicant is requesting from the City Plan Commission the following exceptions. To allow for a 52-foot residential sub-collector street, to allow for a 64-foot collector arterial street, to allow for the use of 10 and 15-foot pedestrian pathways, and to allow for a location map scale of one inch equaling 1,000 feet, and lastly, to allow for block lengths to exceed 1,500 feet. Thank you. This concludes my presentation. Thank you. Commissioners, questions, concerns? 
um, Commissioner Gallego. Uh, it sounds like they're actually going above and beyond what is required for this particular development. Is that correct? That is correct. The thing is when they vest, they either have to match the exact requirements. So even if they go above and beyond, they would have to request a modification request. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Thank you. We'll now hear from the representative. Good afternoon, Chair, Commissioners, Conrad Conde with Conde Incorporated. We do concur with all staff's comments and entertain, glad to entertain, entertain, yeah, glad to entertain any questions you all might have. Questions to the representative? No, actually, I'd just like to thank you, Mr. Conde, for being so considerate of future residents. Oh, absolutely. No questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Now it's in our hands. We're not used to having that happen. I know, huh? right? The standards increase. How nice. Can I entertain a motion? I move that we accept the city's recommendations um, okay. as described earlier, uh, along with the additional um, exceptions requested by the uh, developer. Second. Gorski. It's now open for discussion. Any more discussions? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It carries unanimous. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you. We now move to item number four. Staff. Good afternoon, Chair and members of the Commission. Alex Alejandre with Planning and Inspections. Item number four on the agenda is Bill Burnett Unit 1, Replat A, involving a risk subdivision combination application. This development is located outside the city of El Paso limits and is located north of I-10 and east of Joe Battle Boulevard. Access to the subdivision will be from Mercantile Avenue and Paseo del Este Boulevard. Here is a subdivision superimposed on the aerial map. The purpose of the replat is to resubdivide 30 acres of land into two industrial lots. The industrial lots range from approximately 14 to 16 acres in size. Drainage will be provided by conveying runoff to a retention pond. This subdivision application is vested and reviewed under the subdivision code in effect in 2002. This is a map of the Paseo del Este land study with the original proposed subdivision shown outlined in yellow. This is a preliminary plan. This is the final plan. The applicant is requesting an alternative design pursuant to El Paso City Code section 19.26.040 alternative subdivision improvement design of the applicable code. The alternative design request is to allow for a 10-foot hike bike trail path on the south portion of Paseo del Este Boulevard in lieu of the required five-foot sidewalk. Here we have a comparison of the required and proposed proportionate share. At the end of the day, the uh, developer is offering six additional feet of landscape, uh, 11 feet of uh, additional of roadway, and the reason for the alternative design is because instead of proposing a five foot sidewalk, they are going above and beyond with a 10 foot hike and bike trail. These are the existing conditions along Paseo del Este Boulevard. Staff recommends approval of the alternative design for Paseo del Este Boulevard as it exceeds the minimum design standards for construction of a five foot sidewalk for a minor arterial and is an acceptable design to the city of El Paso. Staff recommends approval of Bill Burnett Unit 1 Replat 8 on a risk subdivision combination basis as it complies with Title 19 requirements and approval of the alternative design requests. And that concludes my presentation. Questions? Alex, um, your presentation also shows that the developer is going above and beyond, as you mentioned earlier. Correct. And compared to the other one, this one does not involve any besting. 
that was the main reason. But at the end of the day, yes, they are going above and beyond. Excellent. Thank you, Alex. Are there any comments from the, the people that are, live around there? It seems to be close to a residential area. Uh -huh. No, uh, uh, for this particular uh, uh, development, uh, public notice was not required. Not required. So we did not get any public uh, comments. Okay. And the reason, the reason for not the public notice is because it's not within the city? Uh, part of it could be because it's not part of the city. It is also, uh, when it was originally platted, it was for commercial and industrial purposes. It is required when it involves uh, development that was residential within the last five years, even if it's on the ET extraterritorial jurisdiction. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Thank you. Can we hear from the representative? Good afternoon, Chair and Commissioners. My name is Karen Barraza. I'm with Train Associates, and we agree, agree with all staff comments. Questions for the representative? I'd just like to thank you for doing what you did. We love it when someone comes in and goes above and beyond, um, which shows a true commitment to our community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's in our hands. Can I entertain a motion? Uh, Mike, motion to approve. Worski. Second, Apodaca. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to handle um, items number five and nine together. Okay. Good afternoon, Chair and members of the Commission. Nina Rodriguez with Planning and Inspections. Um, items five and nine on the agenda is a rezoning request as well as a request for a condition released for a property located um, north of Cimarron Canyon Drive and east of Wrestler Drive. I'm sorry, what is your name? Nina Rodriguez. Here we have an aerial view of the subject property, um, and this particular aerial is representative of the rezoning request. The area is currently vacant, and it is divided among two different parcels. So the larger parcel being parcel two, and the smaller parcel being parcel one. The applicant is proposing to rezone parcel one from C1 commercial to C3 commercial and to rezone from C4, C1, and C3 to R3A residential for the purpose of um, single family residential lots. Oh, and I'm sorry, I forgot to mention, and for parcel one, they're proposing um, for permitted commercial uses. Here, we have an aerial image um, showing us the future land use um, map. Let's see, parcel one is located within the G4 suburban walkable future land use designation, while parcel two spans the G4 walkable future land use designation and G7 and or rail yards future land use designation. Both proposed uses of commercial and single family residential align with the G4 suburban walkable land use designation while exemplifying the potential for the mixed use development called for in G7 industrial and or rail yards land use designation. And here we have an aerial um, demonstrating the request for the condition release. Again, this is divided among two parcels. Um, at the bottom we have parcel one and at the top we have parcel two. The applicant is requesting to amend an existing condition imposed by ordinance 15672 on parcel one and to release an existing condition imposed by ordinance number 15708 on parcel two. Parcel one is currently zoned C4, um, but is proposed to be rezoned to R3A residential. 
um, where the applicant is proposing single family residential lots. Oh, I'm sorry, that's parcel two. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. And parcel one is currently zoned C3 commercial with a portion um, proposed to be rezoned to R3A residential uh, and the rest uh, to maintain the C3 commercial status. Um, and again, for the purpose of um, proposed com uh, permitted commercial uses. On January 20th, 2004, Parcel one, as a part of a larger property, was rezoned to C3C commercial conditions and the following condition was applied. Um, a 10 foot wide landscape buffer to include but not limited to evergreen trees placed at 15 feet on center shall be required along the property line where abutting residential or apartment zoning districts. This shall be in addition to landscaping requirements of chapter 20.65 of the El Paso Municipal Code and shall be required prior to the issuance of any building permits. The applicant is requesting to amend this condition to apply only to the commercial zones adjacent to residential zone districts or uses. Um, further, the landscaping buffers will not be required when adjacent to stormwater ponding or other open spaced areas. Um, as written, the current condition impedes the applicant's ability to develop single family residential lots in a uniform manner among the other proposed single family residential lots. Here, we're looking at parcel two, which again is the smaller piece um, of the condition release. And in this, um, in this instance, the applicant is requesting to release the condition entirely. It is another landscape, um, a landscaped um, condition. Um, the reason being is as the applicant's proposing to down zone from what it currently is, in, it's, it's obsolete. <clears throat> okay. So here we have our conceptual plan um, demonstrating a 0.37 acre property proposed to be rezoned um, from C1 commercial to C3 uh, for permitted commercial uses and the larger area, an 18.2 acre property proposed to be rezoned from C4 commercial, C1 commercial, and C3 commercial to allow for the use of single family residential lots. The applicant is proposing 54 single family residential lots and a ponding area. Access to the subject property is provided from Cimarron Canyon Drive and Cavison Court. Cimarron Canyon Drive does lead to Wrestler Drive, a major arterial as classified in the city's major thoroughfare plan. The classification of these roads is appropriate for the proposed developments. Here we have an image of the subject property facing west along Wrestler Drive. Adjacent properties to the north and south are vacant lots zoned C4 and C3 commercial, while the properties to the east are zoned R3A residential and already consist of single family residential uses. Adjacent properties to the west are zoned M1, um, light manufacturing and include vacant land, a warehouse and parking lot uses. The subject property does not lie within any neighborhood associations. Property owners within 300 feet were notified on June 2nd, 2023. At this point, the planning division has received one email in opposition to the rezoning and the condition released request and one phone call in support of the rezoning and condition release requests. With that, staff recommends approval of the rezoning request with the following condition imposed on parcel one, 
that a 10-foot landscape buffer with high-profile native or naturalized trees of at least two-inch caliper and 10 feet in height shall be placed at 20 feet on center along the property lines adjacent to residential, residential zone districts or uses. The landscaped buffer shall be irrigated and maintained by the property owner at all times and be installed prior to the issuance of any certificates of occupancy or certificates of completion. No landscape buffer shall be required where adjacent to stormwater ponding or to open space areas. Staff also recommends the condition amendment for a portion of parcel one and the condition release of the condition currently imposed on parcel two. And that concludes my presentation. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention, this was also um, presented before OSAB yesterday, the Open Space Advisory Board and they also approved of uh, the request five to zero unanimously. This is five and nine, correct? Yes, sir. Five One being presentation the for both. It was easier. Um, five being the rezoning <laughs> and nine being the condition release. Thank you. Questions, comments? Thank you, Ms. Rodriguez. Can we hear from the representative? Good afternoon, Chair, members of the Commission. Adrian Olguin Ontiveros with CSA Design Group for the record. Uh, we concur with staff comments. I'm here to answer any, any questions you may have. Questions? Comments? Seeing none, thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody from the public that would like to speak on this? So again, this is for items five and nine. Anyone online, uh, star six to meet yourself or here in the meeting room. It appears we have no one for this item, these items. Thank you. Commissioners, it's ours. So there was one email in opposition. Um, they were asking not to have any um, commercial rezoning near the residential areas, but it looks like there's gonna be a buffer of residential, new residential housing between the uh, proposed commercial area. And that commercial area is also on a corner. So I think it's better suited to use that corner for a commercial purpose than for residential in case any uh, stoplights go in at some point and there's more uh, pollution or noise from that traffic, yeah. <coughs> Yeah, I, I can chime in. The, so the, the rezoning, Nina, can you go back to the, um, I guess the conceptual, the conceptual plan? Yeah, that, that one's good. So the area in, in red, that little, uh, little triangle piece there, that's the area um, proposed to be commercial, which is Long Wrestler, which is uh, more appropriate. And then um, that's also where um, there'd be a condition, obviously we're recommending for a, a landscape buffer between residential and commercial. And then the rest of the uh, proposed rezoning is, is residential in nature. So it's, it's very small um, portion that's being requested to be rezoned to a commercial. I make a motion to approve. Before you do that, before you do that, let's take each motion individually, being that they're separate on the agenda. Okay, we're gonna do motion five first. Second, somebody? Carrillo, second. Second, thank you. Been a motion and a second to approve item number five. Is there any more discussion? Nope. Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And make a motion to approve uh, item nine. Korski? Carrillo, second. Motion to approve item nine with a second. Any discussion, questions, comments? Seeing none. none. All that approved, say aye. 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 Nays? Motion carries, thank you. Okay, now we move to item number eight. Mr. Pina. 
Good afternoon, uh, Chair and members of the Commission. Uh, Saul Pina with uh, Planning and Inspections. Item 8 on the agenda is a detailed site development plan request for the property uh, located at 8100 North Loop uh, Drive. The applicant is requesting review and approval to allow for the use of a shopping center on the subject property. Here we see an aerial view of the subject property highlighted in yellow. Um, this property is located at the intersection of uh, Yabro Drive and North Loop uh, Drive. Here we see the uh, existing uh, zoning. The subject property is zoned uh, C2 commercial with uh, commercial uh, zoning uh, being predominant uh, in the area. Here we see a detailed site plan uh, showing the proposed development. Um, the applicant is proposing to develop uh, three retail buildings and one restaurant as part of the shopping center. Each of the buildings will have an average size of 6,750 square feet and a maximum height of uh, 26 feet. The proposed shopping center will have uh, main access from North Loop Drive and will provide 137 um, vehicular parking spaces, one heavy truck uh, parking space, and 12 uh, bicycle spaces. The proposed development will have a uh, bonding area, which is uh, shown uh, in dark blue. Also, an underground bonding system, which is shown uh, in the middle uh, of this as detailed site development plan. Um, the, proposed, the proposed site plan complies with parking, drainage, and zoning requirements per city code. Here we have a view of the building elevations, and as you can see, um, the maximum height between these two uh, building elevations is uh, 26 feet. Here we see an aerial view with the site plan uh, superimposed. In yellow is the subject property with the proposed structures uh, shown in magenta, land landscaping shown in green, and bonding areas shown in blue. Here we have the front view of the subject property as seen from uh, North Loop Drive. As you can see, um, this property is uh, currently uh, vacant. Here we see the surrounding uh, development uh, to the north is uh, a shopping center, zoned uh, C1 commercial. To the south are single family dwellings uh, zoned R3 residential. To the east are commercial uses and single family dwellings zoned C1 commercial and R3 uh, residential. And to the west is, is another shopping center zoned C1 commercial. With this, uh, staff recommends approval of the detailed site development plan request uh, per section 20.04.150.D detailed site development plan of El Paso City Code. This concludes my presentation. Thank you. This used to be the old uh, GG Arms uh, real estate, okay? That is it's correct, been, yes. Knocked down. Um, are you sure all the lions and tigers and bears are out of there? <laughs> um, also, I had a question. When, and I didn't quite see it, but uh, is there gonna be an entrance to the south side community because it never had one from North Loop to get back there. Um, the main entrance right to uh, this uh, proposed development is going to be uh, through North Loop. Also take note that uh, there's two uh, pad sites that will be built uh, in the future. Uh, the one on the right, uh, that one will remain vacant as of right now, but the one to the left, uh, the new owner of the parcel to the left will have to uh, provide a new uh, site plan per city code. And, and to further elaborate, uh, to the, the uh, properties to the south, the residential development, there, there's no access. Um, there's, it, it doesn't abut the street and there's no opportunity for, for access. So the only access would be off North Loop. Okay. For this, one more question. Um, did I hear you say underground ponding? That is correct. Uh, as you can see, uh, in that rectangle in blue, in between the two magenta squares, there's also going to be an underground uh, ponding system, along with the actual ponding area at the back. Can you define that a little bit better? Underground. I mean, 
you won't see it, it'll be covered or? Uh, for that, uh, I will defer to the applicant so the applicant can uh, elaborate more or give a more elaborate ex explanation a as to what this is. Okay. It looks like there's a parking lot on the surface. That's what I, I see. Am I, am I saying that correctly? That is correct. The, um, the parking uh, will be on the top and the uh, underground uh, system at the bottom, yes. The uh, entrance is only, uh, I guess there's two entrances, one off of, uh, both of them off of North Loop then? Yes, as a matter of fact, yes. Uh, thank you for correcting that. Uh, there's going to be uh, two entrances along North Loop Drive. Any more questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Can we hear from the representative, the applicant? Buenas tardes, señores de la mesa. Disculpen, a ver si podemos utilizar el idioma español conmigo. Si tienen alguna pregunta, mi nombre es Tomás Gallegos. Anybody want to um, um, ask questions? He speaks Spanish. I can translate if need be. La pregunta es de que donde llega el agua abajo del parking, ¿cómo se va a hacer eso? Si ellos the, tienen... The, okay. the question I asked is, uh, underground ponding, how does that work? Ok, este, nuestros planos civiles que se hicieron, incluso ya se, se aprobaron, este, se, se recibe el agua y se filtra, y lo demás, por medio de inlets, va y va y lo recaba el pondi naturales que traemos en la parte de atrás. No. Permítame. Okay. He says that uh, with the plans that they had, what's going to happen is that the ponding is going to, the water is going to collect underneath and then it's going to drain, sort of like a French drain, but drain. And all the other outlets or inlets will also come in and it'll be allowed to drain into the ground. Sí, señor. De esa manera funciona y como le digo, Los planos ya están aprobados por la ciudad. Todos los planos civiles que existen ya ahorita, de hecho, se está trabajando ya en eso, en el site. He says that the method works and all the planning has been approved by the city and they're ready to go. Questions, preguntas. For ¿Y cómo se va? Okay. ¿Es un tanque que va a estar abajo? Es un sistema como para filtrar el agua por medio de material y se usa una especie como de arco, no sé si los han visto amarillos de plástico para soportar lo que traemos encima que viene siendo el pavimento para el uh -huh. estacionamiento en la parte superior, okay. que es una estructura. Keep going. Go ahead. Uh, he says that she asked uh, how that system works and says it's a system of arches that support it and I've never heard of this, but it's supposed to work. Yeah, obviously all these um, proposals are, are reviewed. Al although it's not before the plan commission, um, it, it does go before our plan review staff as well as land development to make sure it functions adequately. There are a number of different design options that um, are considered often when we think of, of ponding or water retention, it's a big mm -hmm. hole in the ground. Mm -hmm. But there are other ways to, to capture it. And I know one of the points that the commission has been asking about low impact development, about capturing it, say in the, in the uh, in the, uh, the landscaped areas. This is another alternative, alternative method, if you will, to, um, to, to capture and, and retain the, the water. How does, uh, this is Korsky, how does the uh, uh, water percolate uh, through the scenario I just heard described? That's what I was saying. That, I, I will just say I'm a planner, and so I let the, the plan review staff and, and the other, the engineers on, on staff work, work that out, so. ¿Y van a reciclar la agua? El, el agua que, se... que recolecta uh -huh. eh, pues, en, en la parte de, del ponding que traemos en la parte trasera, ahí lo utilizan para landscape que ya traemos uh -huh. ahí. Okay. Traemos un buffer incluso por la colindancia que traemos con la zona habitacional en la parte de atrás. Entonces estamos cumpliendo, pienso yo, con todo eso que estuvimos okay. trabajando Saúl Piña y nosotros para cumplir con todas las restricciones que nos pide. Incluso se, se hizo un, 
al carril de desaceleración en la Norloop que se pidió por el Textat y, y las mismas entradas, las dos entradas que se utilizaron fueron este, aceptadas por el Textat y, y, y tuvimos que hacer ese carril de desaceleración también. Incluso un análisis del tráfico también se, se tuvo que hacer para esa parte de ahí. Okay. The question was if Gracias. that water was going to be recycled, reused, and the uh, gentleman said that um, part of it is that they'll try and they'll also use some of that water for irrigation within the area. He also commented that uh, this all went to TxDOT, the entrances went to TxDOT, and also something about the stormwater uh, in that area also passed and uh, was through TxDOT. Is this going to be constructed prior to the development itself? Uh, I'm, and also, I'm curious as to how you're going to get the water from a, a, a below grade uh, ponding area back to the surface again. La pregunta que hace el comisionario Gorski es que si esto se va a hacer antes que empiecen ustedes a agregar arriba. Eh, pues se trabaja simultáneamente incluso, pienso yo, tienen que ver todos los puntos del grading para vaya la pendiente que va a ir a recoger ahí, ¿verdad? Pero va casi simultáneo lo civil, porque es parte de lo civil, del grading y demás. The gentleman says that it's going to be done simultaneously while all the work is done, the grading will be done, all this, and all the plans will be done, and as they start doing it, everything simultaneously will hopefully fit. And, and to that point is, as obviously after, um, it, these have to, if, if this is approved, it still has to go through, get the building permits, go through that process, as well as get inspected and uh, approved by, before um, the development will be able to, to function and be open to the public. Any more questions? Yes. Uh, Atrás de la propiedad, van a construir una barda de seis pies, is, is that a standard size wall, six feet, separating residential from commercial? And is that going to be built before the construction starts? Because, uh, you know, I've been involved in situations where a six foot wall is really not enough for to separate a uh, residential from commercial. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, Rob, I think, is that the it is. Promise? It is per code the standard minimum height for uh, mandatory screening walls, sir. Yes, sir. Six feet is the mandatory. Correct. Minimum. Minimum. Correct. We had another uh, project where we raised that to eight feet. I think that was on Montana. Correct. Because yeah. of noise and. Yeah. So the distinction there on on that item you mentioned, sir, would be that was a rezoning, right? Uh, this case is they're not changing the, the zoning's already there. That already happened. Uh, as part of that rezoning, there was a condition imposed for a site plan. In fact, as well as that six foot rock wall, um, that is a condition of the property. So now they're just coming in with kind of this, one of the final steps be before development to comply with the conditions that were imposed from the previous rezoning. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions? Gracias. Muchas gracias a ustedes. Bonito día. Commissioners, it's in all ball, ball courts. Item number eight. We'll entertain a motion. Apodaca, motion to approve. Gallardo, second. Motion has been made and second. Any more discussion? Concerns? Comments? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Oh my goodness, we're at the end. i going to tell Mr. Cummings that I'm faster than him running a meeting. <laughs> All right, now we move. Um, let me make sure because I don't want Mr. Kevin Smith telling me that I forgot something. <laughs> All right, we're going to move to other business, discussion and actions. Okay, um, as you all remember, eight weeks ago, 
we talked about the downtown uptown plan and we sent it to a subcommittee. Subcommittee was chaired by Commissioner um, Carrillo to include um, Commissioner Cummings, Commissioner Castro and myself. We went to a few meetings. Mr. Carrillo was in all the meetings and uh, he has a report to give to us. Commissioner Carrillo, the floor is yours. Thank you. And I apologize, I'm recovering from a cold, so if my voice gives out, you can kind of help me out. Um, so just to give you an overall uh, purpose and scope of the subcommittee report, um, the purpose was to review the plan with neighborhoods that were the most vocal about um, lack of community engagement with consultants over the prior year. Um, so the scope was to engage with these communities, go over the report with them, and uh, come up with some recommendations. And we had the, the city with us at every step of the way, um, providing lots of support, clarification, and resources. Uh, we're really grateful for that. So part of the timeline, what we did was we contacted communities, let them know where we're gonna have a subcommittee underway. We translated and printed the 90-page plan um, as part of the subcommittee, and we printed it with help of the city. They're very generous and we had those bound, they were 90 page uh, documents, English and in Spanish, and the purpose of that was these neighborhoods, and you can see a map, it's Rio Grande, Sunset Heights, Durganguito, Chihuahuita, and Segundo Barrio, they have a um, uh, majority of people there speak Spanish at home, and they lack internet access, so it was important for us to provide the report in Spanish, and uh, printed um, the final report. Uh, the city did do lots of outreach in Spanish and printed before that, but the final report was not made available in Spanish or printed. Um, and so we met with the communities, we summarized the plan, we surveyed their needs and assets, um, we went to neighborhood association meetings in these areas. Um, again, the city was very collaborative, very helpful, very constructive, and um, we discussed recommendations for the plan, we discussed the plan itself, uh, we clarified items, and we really focused on the action items um, at the end of the report that really pertain to preventing displacement of the current residents, because that was our biggest concern. How do we prevent displacement as this plan is implemented over the next 10 to 15 years? So the result is the report that you have. Um, uh, we provide a summary of the master plan itself, and we highlight implementation actions that intend to prevent displacement and improve quality of life for current residents. Um, you have that within this uh, subcommittee report. Uh, we also include recommendations for the plan, and uh, these recommendations came from meetings between neighborhoods and the city. And there are four recommendations, and we're trying to address common weaknesses of urban plans, and that is lack of enforcement, lack of transparency, and lack of community engagement. So again, this is a 10 to 15 year plan and it's only as strong as uh, it can be implemented. So part of the action, the recommendations that we had, um, number one is to change the name of the plan. So every neighborhood was really concerned that Uptown, their area was, was being rebranded to Uptown. Uh, Uptown has affluent connotations. Um, it's not organically from the neighborhood. Um, there are businesses like Uptown Spa popping up in these areas where the average median income in El Paso is 50,000, but the median income in these neighborhoods is 22,000. Um, so their concern is this will distract from the goal of improving neighborhoods. So they do recommend changing the name to um, the downtown and surrounding neighborhoods master plan. Um, the city was very uh, receptive to including uh, preventing displacements within the mission of the plan itself. Um, and the city had a lot of great suggestions. So as far as accountability, they recommended and the neighborhoods concurred to create a public dashboard website. And this is to track progress of the implementation of the plan. And so the, the county of El Paso has something similar to track their master plan. Uh, we propose something similar and the details are in the reports. It includes an option for neighborhoods to uh, request a meeting with the city every year. Um, we also introduce a program that requires developers to meet with neighborhood stakeholders. 
during their development application. So this is based on a model out of Shreveport, Louisiana. It was presented at NUSA, the Neighborhoods USA conference. Um, and the details are in the plan itself. And um, this is a uh, tried method to make sure that neighborhoods have a chance to have say in what is developed in their area without the presence of the city or local politicians. And this small report is, um, the framework is left up to developers and the report is included in the application as it comes to the CPC, for example. Um, so the neighborhoods took it upon themselves to reach out to uh, city council um, they reached out to Chris Canales, to Anello, and to Fierro uh, to present this idea. It would be require an ordinance to be passed. Um, they feel very strongly upon, upon this, um, and they've taken initiative to research the ordinance itself and uh, create a potential timeline of three months before that's implemented. And that would apply to the whole city. And very quickly, the last recommendation is to um, create a program to train neighborhoods to interact effectively with city departments and with developers. And so the city already has the Neighborhood Leadership Academy. If you're all familiar, it's a, it's a one-year course. They meet every week, and they take neighborhood leaders and people that aspire to be leaders to every department across the city, and they do have a graduate program. And we recommend that they review uh, items like uh, land trusts, um, community benefit agreements with neighborhood leaders, and uh, really help them interact more effectively with the city and with uh, developers. And those are the four recommendations we do have from the neighborhoods and from the city. Thank you, Commissioner. Now we'll hear from uh, Mr. Rodriguez, Joaquin. Uh, good afternoon, Chair and Commission. Joaquin Rodriguez with the Capital Improvements Department. I um, just want to say thank you to Commissioner Carillo and the rest of the commissioners on the subcommittee. Uh, I think the last eight weeks have been a really successful effort in doing some enhanced outreach. Um, we, we have a PowerPoint, but it's the same PowerPoint that we presented last time. Um, I think Commissioner Carillo did a good job of summing up the changes that have been made to the plan uh, within the last eight weeks, namely including uh, specific language for uh, anti-displacement policies within the mission statement, um, and then including a number of uh, strategy, implementation strategies specific to uh, combating displacement within, within the plan area. Uh, and those are strategies that really could be applied um, in other parts of the city as well. We don't uh, oppose any of the recommendations from the CPC subcommittee report. Um, some of those changes are changes that we will carry forward um, to city council and allow them to be the final decision makers on that, um, specifically the, the change about renaming the plan. Um, you know, definitely sensitive to the, the community's concerns. Um, at the same time, the city has sort of been using the uptown nomenclature for quite some time, so I think um, that's definitely a decision that uh, city council will have to make if, if they want to change course in that. Um, we will add a recommendation um, based on y'all's recommendation specifically for the neighborhood participation plans um, to make sure that as we move forward with implementation, that's something that we're um, exploring um, in terms of whether it's uh, an ordinance or a policy or, or however that gets implemented, that's something that will cross further down the line, but the, the recommendation can definitely be added to the plan uh, at this time. The other recommendations I feel are recommendations that don't necessarily impact the adoption of the plan itself but our recommendations that we can move forward with implementing uh, once the plan is adopted um, to track our status and to ensure transparency and, con and continued outreach. Um, so with that, I'm happy to answer any questions you all have uh, on the plan. Um, if not, we do uh, concur with the comments from the, the CPC subcommittee report. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Um, first of all, I just wanna say that um, at first, it looked like it was going to be a tricky situation there, but by the fine work of uh, Commissioner Carrillo and Mr. Rodriguez and his staff, it worked out, and I'm proud of you guys working it out. I'm happy. 
Thank you. Thanks, Beth. <clears throat> so you have an aggressive anti-displacement um, initiative going. Was the plan, did it have to deviate in any way? I mean, is this plan still gonna be viable and as originally envisioned with that particular um, policy? So the, the plan was always structured to avoid and combat displacement, um, but it was structured in a way that did that. So for us as planners, it was clear that we had you know, developed a plan that sort of organically did that. When you looked at the implementation strategies, I don't feel that we had done a good job of reflecting the, the anti-displacement strategies specifically with action items. So that's where we've made the changes, to be more specific about what those action items would be, um, what sort of policies uh, and directions we can take to be more uh, specific and proactive about that. Um, as far as does that threaten the plan in any way, um, I don't believe so. The plan was always structured with different strategies for different context areas, right? What's right for downtown is not right for the single family neighborhoods of Rio Grande and Sunset Heights. What's right for the streetcar corridor is not right for the, the rim area neighborhood or uh, you know, Houston Park or Segundo Barrio. So the plan is structured in a way that our recommendations are specific to the types of context areas where certain types of uh, development, certain types of policies uh, make sense. So I know that a lot of discussion was about the beautification of it too. So none of that has been compromised. The access hasn't been compromised. The, the strategies and recommendations to create a funding framework to do uh, the improvements that you're referring to, that's still in place. I'd like to add, um, I want to commend the neighborhood associations and uh, local nonprofits um, for really helping us coordinate with the neighborhoods themselves. Um, part of their original uh, concern was they weren't involved at the beginning, uh, but they do have access to uh, deep resources in the community and they know the strengths and the assets and the needs. So we tried to have a conversation on the assets of the communities. Um, as far as displacement, it's kind of out of our hands also still because um, when we talk about affordable housing, it is a federal definition, as uh, the city keeps pointing out, um, and it's correct that if there's affordable housing that goes up, affordable housing means it's affordable to people making 60% of the median in El Paso. And the median in El Paso is about 50,000. So 60% of that is 30,000. But again, the median income in these areas ranges from uh, 13 to uh, 23, and that data is included in the report. So a lot of these implementation actions are structured to prevent displacement uh, by encouraging revitalization, giving uh, renters and owners more protections. Um, so it, it, we're trying to make it very comprehensive, and uh, the city has done the work. Any more questions? Chair mm -hmm. Commissioner Carrillo or Mr. Rodriguez? M Mr. Chair, if I, if I might ask a question of the commission. Can, can someone um, from, from the commission talk a little bit more about the public participation plan? Like what kind of projects or what, what, what's, um, what, what, how does that look like? So it was a really brief recommendation um, because there are a lot of, um, the, these are recommendations. They don't really implement policies. They don't really implement anything here once it's passed, but that's going to be pushed on to city council. So the idea of the neighborhood participation plans, this is an ordinance, a program in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, also New Orleans, and it's very structured. Um, and the way it happens, if say there's a rezoning um, in an area, just like El Paso, they have to give notice to residents in the area. And the developers, if it's within their timeline, they have to hold a community meeting about what the project is, how it's gonna impact the neighborhood. And the purpose was really to um, prevent the projects from being held up. Like in this case, um, the developers understand the community needs and concerns before they really develop the, the, their plan, their application. And so it ended, ended up actually um, easing tensions and reducing uh, friction at the CPC um, in Shreveport, Shreveport, Louisiana. And so a lot of developers do appreciate the program. It's a $50 fee. They do the outreach.
they make sure everything is in plain English, understandable. The format is up to them. And the communities actually do give a lot of feedback to make sure the developments are uh, profitable and uh, successful to developers and the community. So we're proposing an adoption of that. Um, they did say that, uh, they presented actually here in El Paso this idea, and they said it was an option and no developers did it, so they created an ordinance. So we do want to implement an ordinance, and that's why some of the neighborhood associations have already reached out to uh, their representatives to get this kind of action kind of moving. The, the, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm asking is just because I want to make sure it doesn't run contrary to, to state law. Exactly. Um, because yeah. here in Texas, they have different laws than they do in Louisiana. Right. And so here they're very uh, property owner yeah. um, centered, if you will. Yeah. So um, um, that, that's, that's my thought. I'm not sure, Russell, if you have anything else. Yeah. Else. It's actually kind of appropriate to be talking about this. The uh, state law changed a lot today, actually. The governor signed um, a super preemption bill, HB 2127, today. And uh, the purpose of that bill is to um, remove any non-business friendly practices and local government um, that conflict with state law. So um, it's probably really going to reduce the city's authority and um, oversight at the local level on a wide area of things. But I think um, in this case, it's probably not something we can do anymore um, because unless it's, expre it's expressly allowed in the Texas local government code, then we um, really aren't allowed to do it. That's, that is something the city did mention um, and also the representatives that it might not be possible in Texas, so the other option is to secede, but I will leave that to another uh, venue. <laughs> I think I'll just add, for, for the purpose of the planning document, um, since it is just a recommendation of a possible strategy, uh, we don't really need to concern ourselves so much with the, the state law aspect. At, once the plan is adopted and we move forward with implementation, we'll really get down into the nuts and bolts of what we can do and to what extent we can require uh, developers to do it. It may be a program that the city can implement just at an option as an optional basis. Um, you know, as, as you mentioned, and I think as the report mentions, um, it actually ended up decreasing, uh, you know, processing times for some of these rezoning cases by having that coordination up front. So some developers may see value uh, in that. So uh, definitely, as we, as we move forward with implementation, we'll make sure that there's no, uh, you know, no conflicts with with any state law, whether uh, existing or, or future legislative changes as well. Any more questions, comments, ideas? And uh, Mr. Rodriguez, um, if we approve it today, when will it uh, go to city council? July 5th is the next city council meeting. We hope to get uh, the downtown uptown plan on the July 5th agenda. And you will be presenting this? Yes, we'll be presenting um, not only the, the CPC subcommittee process, um, but as well as the, the breakdown of the final implementation uh, strategies and, and framework and uh, final implementation matrix of the plan as well. So you will need the subcommittee chair to be there present? If, if you'd like to be, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I will, I will pick, you on, pick you up on the way down. For sure. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> If, if you are going to be present, then we do need a motion for to allow one of the commissioners to attend and speak on behalf hmm. of the plan commission. Otherwise, you would have to attend as a private citizen. I was going to do that, but I was going to go through it and then entertain a motion for Commissioner Carrillo. Commission, it's in our hands. I do want to, um, if it does not delay the... Uh, introduction to city council. Uh, we did intend to release the port two weeks ago, but it wasn't on the agenda. And so uh, the city did mention that it might be good to um, release the report today and give the community a chance just to leave comments. And so that would be uh, by 29th, where we would um, have the report out there for just more last minute community approval. And we could vote on it in the, by the 29th. Um, just to maintain the goodwill we've received from the community and to make sure, uh, hey, it's been out there. If it doesn't delay the project that was on recommendation the city mentioned two weeks ago. Thoughts? So what you're saying is that here we postpone till the 29th? 
in accepting this? Uh, just because we have the report, we have access to it now, and the community has access to it also, uh, just to make sure they feel comfortable, since this is a big project, there was a lot of opposition, mm -hmm. and it doesn't delay introduction to city council. And Mr. Rodri mistaken. Mr. Rodriguez? So my preference would be for you all to take action today. Uh, we can still publish the report. We'll put it up on our website. Um, again, if, if city council is sensitive to any comments that come in, we can still present that uh, to city council at that time, and, and they can, uh, you know, they can postpone their action, or they can move to approve of the master plan with with changes. You know, they're they're able to make changes at the dais as well. So, just remember uh, that uh, that. We postponed this for eight weeks. Okay, so sometime, if not today, in two weeks, we gotta act on it. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, but did I understand correctly that um, you're still soliciting feedback from the neighboring areas, the neighborhoods? They were involved with uh, the previous drafts. They, were, they saw the final draft. Um, it was just a recommendation because the original timeline was to release it two weeks ago, uh, have it on the agenda, um, and vote today. But the, we didn't get it on the agenda uh, four weeks ago. So um, the neighborhoods, I, as I understand, are happy. Okay. Um, we've met with all the neighborhoods. They've seen the report. I think they only have one recommendation to try and prioritize the neighborhood participation plans. Um, to get that on the agenda, but that's kind of outside the scope. It's really up to city council. They've already reached out to them. So just following the advice from the city staff from the previous uh, meeting here two weeks ago, um, they recommended having the report released and just get last minute comments or feedback from the public. But um, I'll leave that up to city to uh, make a recommendation. But you feel comfortable that we're not going to be sideswiped by anything or, I mean, because if you're going to oh, yeah. go up and yeah. speak on behalf of the commission, yeah. you know, I just want to make sure that we're not going to be having to. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's more risk if um, we did communicate the timeline for it would be delayed. There'd be time for more public input and to, uh, we're not going to be erasing any of that goodwill, but um, it just, it's a shift from the schedule that the neighbors anticipated, that they would see the final product, have two weeks to comment on the final report, mm -hmm. um, and uh, consider that against a small delay that won't um, prevent us from getting this to city council on the 5th. It's kind of a balance. You know? So it, it would prevent us the, the backup for posting for city council on the 5th is due a week before that, so your your meeting would not happen until after the deadline to post that backup. Oh, okay, so the deadline to post is yeah. mm -hmm. next week. Yeah. Well, so any more discussion? So, it's two weeks so does that mean we can wait another two weeks until we get all feedback, or it's still tight? Mm -hmm. Is there still time? So Raul is telling me that the posting deadlines for council just changed to two weeks. So then it would definitely push our council date back to the end of July. Um, we've already started coordinating with our consultants to have their schedules ready so that they're with us to present on July 5th. Um, I'd, I'd leave it to the commission and, and to the planning inspection staff. My, my preference is that you all take action today. Um, your, your charge in the charter is actually to make your recommendations to councils forwarded to you from, or to items forwarded to you, forwarded to you from council within 30 days. We've already, uh, you know, doubled that. So I think any, any further delay I think is. Um, um, I don't know, not, not preferable from, from my staff at times. Commissioner Gorski, um, I guess I have a little concern. I'm assuming um, uh, the chairman has a uh, copy of the report that uh, was produced. Okay. And I have an old copy that was revised. Yeah, you know, where it said draft on it. I, I think yeah. I have not uh, seen anything other than the uh, discussion we've had here. Me uh, either. Uh, excuse uh, me, Mr. Chair. The copy Mr. of that report was included. It was. In the yes, it, with the agenda. It was. It was. Yes, it was. It was an attachment number eleven. 
Was it highlighted in any way that uh, it's, differentiated It's just like all, all the other items, every single staff report, and oh, that gotcha. item from Brandon was also oh. included. Right. Are you it referencing was. the subcommittee report or the master plan? Let's say the uh, uh, report. Subcommittee report. Right, and that's that was included on the um, uh, agenda, actually, in on the attachment, package. just like uh, every week. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it is online. Yeah, it's yes. online, and then also if you go on to the website for the agendas, and also the link to the master plan that for the uptown downtown is also included in there. We always get our uh, packet. I still call it a packet. Uh, it used to come <laughs> when I was on the school board, but now it comes on the computer. And uh, it's um, within our purview, our responsibility Correct. to look it up and get acquainted with it so that when we come to the meetings, at least we saw it or know about it a little bit, and then we can ask questions. So from my interactions, the neighborhoods are happy. It was just they did um, mention after this was submitted that they want to prioritize the NPPs. I think that's something they can do with city council. Um, that's the appropriate place to do that. Um, I don't anticipate any further comments from them. Um, it just kind of it's in line with the purpose of the subcommittee itself that we didn't want to rush things. So. Uh, if you want to call Cito and say, hey, we voted, it's cool, then. <laughs> and he's a Sunset Heights representative, very passionate. All right, so I'll entertain a motion. I move that we accept um, Commissioner Gaviria to address <clears throat> on behalf of the commission. As long as you preface that this decision was made today based on information we have up to today. Um, That's a long motion you just <laughs> made. <laughs> it, 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 it is not one of my longest, I'm gonna tell you that right now. Um, but I, uh, I move that uh, Commissioner Carrillo um, speak on our behalf. Discussion? I do have something to say. Um, I think uh, Commissioner Carrillo is the right person. He's been involved. He knows it up and down, sideways, along with Mr. Rodriguez. All in favor, say hey, aye. Excuse me, Mr. Chair, just real quick. Elsa, did you get that motion? Uh, yeah, but, but did you Sorry, also? I did hear anybody second that. Did, did you also get the motion itself? Well, the motion was to. Um, the motion was to appoint to, to Mr. Carrillo Mr. as Carrillo. the point person at city council. We still got to do the actual accepting. Okay, okay that's why I want to make it sure. Was a little, you know, yeah. I, I just want to make sure that right. everything gets Correct. covered yeah. appropriately in the minutes. Yeah, but nobody has seconded that. I need a second. Papodaca second. All right, so the motion's been made that um, Commissioner Carrillo represents this commission at City Council to present along with Mr. Rodriguez. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Now, back to number 11. So can, I ask, can I ask if all the commissioners, uh, did anybody get to read the report that they saw? Okay. Yes. Did you review the report when it was released within the attachments? I, I saw one at okay. the very beginning of this whole process. Oh, the subcommittee report, though. I mean, the one that came out um, was released um, initially last Thursday. Okay. So that might be one concern. Um, and that was why we intended to release it uh, two weeks ago to give the com commissioners time to review the report. Um, but we did make recommendations. So. The thing with uh, two weeks ago, um, if we were to put it or talked about it, it would have violated the Texas Open Meeting Act because it's not on the agenda. So we can't do it. Not only that, but if we were to do it two weeks ago, we would have had to done it 72 hours before that so that we don't violate the Texas Open Meeting Act. 
Yeah, and we were still having community meetings the day before. So we had moved Segundo right. the Wednesday before, the day before. So that's just one thing to consider. Um, I don't want to delay it another month, but I mean, the that's kind of our uh, role to be the intersection between the community and uh, staff and developers. So uh, any recommendations? Okay. I, I would say when you're ready to make a recommendation, you make a recommendation. To, I mean, I just be cognizant of, of, of Joaquin and, and CID staff have indicated they're planning on July 5th, but at the same time, you need to be comfortable with recommendations you're giving to council. You're, you're giving council recommendations on planning right. related matters. If you're comfortable today, I would say make a recommendation. If you're not comfortable today, you postpone it for two weeks. Um, that's, that's what I would say. So we did have a, another two weeks of community engagement. That was another thing that we did do. We initially planned only six, but we went all the way up to the eighth week um, engaging with the community. So I think that's a good point to bring up. They did get to be involved with the um, reviewing the final report itself, the community, and they had um, time to make recommendations together with the city. So I think that's a good um, compromise. Um, I'm happy with the recommendations. All the neighborhoods were involved. Um, and just to speed up the process and today's meeting, I think it is a great idea to uh, vote and uh, we can spread word to the communities themselves to show up to city council if they have any concerns and follow the implementation there because um, they can still be involved by uh, making recommendations to the plan furthermore. But I think we're ready to go. So I'll entertain a motion. No, I still want to, well, we postponed this in the table to the end. Oh. There, there is a motion on the table. Commissioner, good afternoon. Little bit to it, running the inspections. I, I'm sitting back there. I'm, trying to understand why the postponement, because you've already taken action on the report that was uh, from the subcommittee. So that report supports what uh, Mr. Uh, Joaquim presented to you. So I, I don't think there's, there's, there's a need for any further delay. Um, we still have about two or three weeks. So anybody that wants us to do um, additional comments, those comments can be sent to staff and those comments will be included at the time of this um, item you know, being posted. So I'll entertain a motion. A Polarka motion, motion to approve. Motion. Th there was a motion to postpone for two weeks. I didn't get a second. Without a second, motion fails. And just to address any concerns, uh, Commissioner Gorski, you may have. Um, I think the communities were very involved. We did have an additional two weeks. Well, I think it's not only myself, but also four other commissioners. Mm. Okay. So the report was included the last week in the emails with the other items. Um, I did submit it to Elsa on Tuesday to be make sure it was included. And that is kind of our opportunity to review it the week before. There were no revisions. That was the final report. So I'd hate for our lack of review to postpone this even more. Um, I think we've, we've had this on the table for a long time now, and I think it's time to move on, and I think, uh, and I want to make a motion to approve. Can you be a little more specific? Well, it's been going on since April. I, no, 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 I understand, but on your motion. Motion to approve with the four recommendations. Yeah, motion to approve with the recommendations that were made by Commissioner. Uh, four, four recommendations by Commissioner. Uh, Mr. Commissioner. Gallardo. Do I hear a second? Gallardo, I, I was looking Gallardo, but there's a Gallardo. Do I hear? Do I hear a second? I um I want a second, and even okay. though I have not seen the mm -hmm. final. Hold yeah. on, hold on. The motion has been made and second. Um, now let's open it for discussion. Okay. I'm, I'm the sorry. motion has been made to approve the subcommittee report as presented by um, 
Commissioner Carrillo? Uh, and is, I mean, is that okay, hold on. also- Go I, ahead. I believe it's a little bit Carrillo. confusing because um, this is um, on uh, Mr. Rodriguez's recommendation of adoption. Can I, can I make a suggestion? That we do two motions, one to accept the report from the CPC subcommittee, and then a second motion to recommend approval of the plan with the report so for that recommendation. Yeah, okay. I think so, that would be a little bit more. Okay, since we have a motion yeah. second on the floor, we have to mm -hmm. vote on that. You can okay? rescind the. So all in favor of the motion that we had, say aye. All opposed, say nay. Aye. Excuse, I, excuse me, Mr. Chair, uh, what, what motion's on the table? Because all I heard was a motion, motion to approve. The gentleman made, seconded by Ms. Gallardo. And um, it's a true, it's a, it's a real motion. So, so I, I, if, I, if I might, Mr. Abodaka, maybe a motion to approve, accept the subcommittee plan, you can amend your, your motion, and right. if you can accept the amendment, and then the, the commission can vote on it. Motion to approve the, the plan with the recommendations made by Commissioner Carrillo? The four recommendations? That was, that was the same motion he made before. So it would be, yeah, to accept the subcommittee's yeah. recommendations. The subcommittee recommendations. Subcommittee, yeah. To accept the subcommittee recommendation. Mm -hmm. Which is what you just reported, wasn't it? Let's get that motion right, guys. Yeah, let's get the motion. Motion to accept the uh, the report, the subcommittee report presented by Mr. by Commissioner Carrillo. Second. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Now I need another motion. Mr. Rodriguez, can you help us again on that part? I, I think that one's just adoption of the, the plan itself. So a motion to uh, adopt the downtown uptown plan with re recommendations as specified in the report. Those were four recommendations. Yes. <laughs> I'll second. <laughs> second. Any more discussion? And just for discussion, the other four commissioners on the subcommittee were very involved. They saw the report. They were involved with um, compiling the report. So we do have a majority of people, commissioners, who were involved and knowledgeable of the report and the process. I Ms. just tell you earlier that um, I have seen some of the reports. I have seen some of the reports. And in fact, I have been on some of the calls, the community calls that you had during the meetings. So, um, yeah, there was some conference calls that were happening. This was at the beginning of the whole process that started several years ago is what I want to say. I'm almost certain, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm familiar with it, not detailed um, regarding the, the last report that was compiled, but definitely. I just have one question, legal attorney Ablin. Are we okay? Yeah. We're good? Yeah, okay. No all right. All, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Aye. All right. Thank you. Need a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Gallardo. Carrillo, second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Oh, that was painful. <laughs>